Folks, thanks a lot for the 70,000 subscribers, you guys are awesome. But we're not stopping here, let's push it folks to 100,000 subscribers. So give that support to the channel and subscribe and hit that like button down below to reach our goal of 153 likes. And now let's go for it. In the opening of the story, an angel recounts that one day she heard from a person that she should learn more about humans. And this leaves her very insecure because she doesn't even know how to greet them properly. However, above the insecurity, tremendous curiosity leads the angel to the heart of one of the cities of men, where she believes she will live fantastic experiences. Meanwhile, leaving his shift at the fancy restaurant, Tokumitsu is exhausted due to the long shift he just finished. On his way home, he encounters a kitten he had adopted as a child, but since he couldn't keep it, a cat-loving neighbor ended up taking the animal. It seems too late to think about it, but currently, he could take care of this kitten after all, as it has been a month since he started high school and moved out on his own. His apartment is not the epitome of tidiness, but one day he will put everything in order. At this moment, all he wants is not to feel so alone all the time. Until suddenly, a feather of angelic wing invades his house through the window. The next day, the alarm clock wakes Tokyo Mitsu, and his body feels so heavy that he's sure he caught a cold. During breakfast, he notices that the window slept open, although he always closes it every night, but soon he realizes the reason for all this, an unknown girl sleeping on his balcony. The young man panics and ends up spilling his milk on her, who, after saying good morning to the homeowner as if she had been living there for years, decides to change her wet clothes. Meanwhile, Tokumitsu wonders if this person might be an Ataka cosplayer who practices parkour in her spare time, or if this could be some new internet prank, so he closes all the curtains to prevent the cameras from filming the apartment. In the meantime, the girl asks for some borrowed clothes and Takumitsu rummages through his drawers like crazy in search of a shirt. After finding the only clean blouse, he apologizes for it not being anything more refined, but it's the girl who apologizes for having used the boy's balcony without permission, as she had nowhere else to sleep. Then she introduces herself as Tawa, while he says his name is Tokumitsu Shintaro. Then the girl uses the boy's first name Shintaro to express her happiness at having met a person with such a pure heart and that this can only be the work of God. With this, the boy begins to appreciate the politeness and beauty of the stranger, who would love to thank all of Shintaro's family members. However, he tells her that he lives alone, and Tawa is impressed that he lives alone in this mansion with so many windows. Facing this, Shintaro has to explain that this room is his entire house, not the entire building. With so many things scattered around, Tawa thought the apartment was a storage room, and this disconnected thought of the girl makes the homeowner think there's something wrong with her. Besides, he questions why she was sleeping on the balcony, and without answering the question, the girl remembers that she needs to repay the hospitality somehow, so she asks the boy to tell her without fear what she can give in return. As she was too close and insisting that she will do everything in her power, Shintaro loses his temper and says that there's nothing he wants, so Tao laments and promises to at least cook something for the host, but there are no ingredients in the house because the guide only eats frozen food with Coca-Cola. Since that's the case, the girl decides to contribute with some cleaning, but as she rushes to the balcony, she ends up tripping over a pile of very suspicious magazines. Fortunately, she didn't see what happened because she was busy separating a cat fight to fulfill the verse. Love your neighbor as yourself. After that, Shintaro puts some band-aids on the girl's scratched fingers and tells her to chill, because these cats sometimes fight but live rubbing against each other on the neighborhood rooftops. Seeing the purity of the girl, Shintaro understands that she might have reasons to run away from home, but reminds her that it's dangerous for a girl to sleep outdoors, so she needs to consider going back home. However, Tal explains that she lives in heaven, God's abode, and that she is an angel. Shintaro finds it amusing to hear what he just heard, but soon he realizes that the girl is serious, so he is taken aback while Tawa tells him that she came down to earth by God's order and represents the angels on a mission to learn about humans. In the midst of this speech, Shintaro really saw that she was serious, but that doesn't mean he believes it, because in his mind, clearly Tawa escaped from some asylum or is one of those pretty, made-up girls who keep pushing some generic computer course. Finally, the strange girl asks to spend a few days at the boy's house. But as the alarm clock alerted that there's half an hour left for work, Shintaro rushes to get her out, at least promising to accompany her to the bus stop. After all the confusion, Shintaro takes a deep breath and believes he made the best decision. In the late afternoon, the boy was exhausted because of the worsening cold, and so the boss let him leave work early. On his way home, he wonders if Tawa really went back home, certain that he would never see her again, until she passes by Shintaro in the company of a weird old man who invited her to go to a hotel. Faced with the situation, he grabs Toa by the wrist and pulls her away, but when it's time to lecture the angel about not trusting strangers, the boy falls flat on the ground and faints. 
Some time later, Shintaro wakes up in his house and Tawa was so worried by his side that she even shed tears of relief upon hearing from the boy that he's better. Shintaro looks around and realizes that the girl had spent all this time taking care of him and speaking of which, she offers a milk and shiru porridge made with the leftover bread as she didn't find rice in the house. Shintaro is happy to eat something he's never eaten before, but at the same time feels embarrassed when Tawa insists on feeding him. In the end, he gives in and feels good to be eating something so delicious made by someone who cared so much to take care of him. After relishing every second of this unique moment, Shintaro resumes his motherly sermon, which he stopped giving in the street, warning Tawa not to trust strangers because there are many bad people in the world. The angel tries to justify her action in following that man but ends up not finding the right words, so Shintaro breaks the silence by offering her his home to stay for a few days since Tawa really has nowhere else to go. With the good news, the girl hugs Shintaro tightly, who knows that this girl is a bit crazy and absent-minded but still a good girl. At least he thinks so. Next, the homeowner comments that it must have been difficult to carry him there, but Tawa replies that it was the easiest thing in the world, considering she can fly. So as the boy makes that same incredulous face again, this time she spreads her angelic wings so that there is no doubt left about who she really is and Shintaro is enchanted by the beauty of that unique scene. However, as he wakes up the next day, the young man is certain that it was just a dream, until the angel wakes up next to him and throws all his certainty down the drain again. Shintaro asks what she's doing in his bed, but as the girl reminds him it's the only bed in the apartment. Seeing that he has indeed taken an angel to raise, Shintaro sees her dress slowly slipping off her shoulder, so he hurries to tell her to change clothes to go buy coffee on the street. Arriving at the corner store, he's eyeing some rice to buy. While Tawa shares a steamed bun that comes as a bonus dish for those who collect some stickers from the packaging. With excitement, the angel ends up exposing her wings outside, so Shintaro needs to put her back on track to avoid causing chaos inside the grocery store. Upon returning home, she apologizes for the untimely excitement and explains that she learned to keep her wings inside while on Earth because she read the guide to Earth life for good kids. Interested in the subject, the human asks what angels actually do in life, so Tawa explains that they convey God's will to people and take care of souls, so they don't get lost between heaven and earth. Shintaro thinks that's a tough job because there are plenty of people in this world, while Tawa concludes by saying that bringing happiness to humans is also an angelic service. However, when the guy asks what angels do to generate this happiness, Tawa realizes she hasn't found out yet, but she presumes that God sent her to find out. Soon, Tawa takes a bite of the steamed bun she brought and promises to eat it every day she can. But Shintaro knows that buying it every day at the neighborhood corner store will drain the money his parents give him every month, so he decides he'll have to start cooking from now on. Therefore, he invites Toa to buy the ingredients as well as the things she needs for everyday life, like a toothbrush. And once again, the angel lets her wings out and shows that she's still going to be a handful on the street. Before they leave, Tawa puts her hand on Shintaro's forehead to see if the fever has improved, and once again he can't control his embarrassment, hastily saying that it was probably just exhaustion fever. As they arrive at the mall, the angel believes it's actually a palace and runs ahead out of pure excitement. Shintaro follows behind the new guests and tries to keep her close to buy the things she needs, and the girl offers to float the shopping basket in case it gets too heavy, considering her wings have to stay out for that. After refusing the offer, obviously, Shintaro puts some chopsticks in the basket, while Tawa seems interested in a kitten mug she found. But since the homeowner already has enough cups, she's too embarrassed to ask. Around them, people are enchanted by Tawa's princess-like appearance, so Shintaro decides to go buy some clothes to attract less attention. Upon entering the store, the boy is relieved to have money to buy a blouse or two, since he saved up from the work he's been doing. So he insists that Tawa take a look around and try on all the models she finds most interesting. A saleswoman offers a new collection to the angel, and she gets excited picking out the pieces she wants to try. When Tawa enters the fitting room, the saleswoman comments that Shintaro's girlfriend is very beautiful, but he makes sure to explain that it's not what she's thinking. In the midst of this, as she changes, Tawa reflects that Shintaro took her in even though he doesn't know her deeper, so she thinks of something to repay all that kindness and goodness, since she said earlier that bringing happiness is her function. Thus, she steps out of the fitting room with one of the outfits, takes the boy's hand, and promises to make him happy, making everyone around think it's a marriage proposal. On their way out of the store, Shintaro is relieved that he didn't feel so embarrassed about this public declaration until Tawa asks him what he thought of her new outfit. Inside, he was saying how beautiful she looked, but on the outside, he could only say that it suited her. Then they buy the food and return home. Upon arrival, Shintaro is tired and assumes that the angel must be too, especially since today is Sunday and the mall was crowded, but Tawa replies that she had a lot of fun because Shintaro was by her side. 
Moreover, Kava finds among the purchases the kitten mug she wanted so much, and with that, they both become embarrassed at the same time in the face of this moment of affection, and Shintaro thinks to himself that he also had a lot of fun with this mysterious angel. As night falls, Shintaro shares the bed with Tawa again and remembers that he shouldn't have bought another bed as well. Two days before reaching this moment, the innocent Tawa arrived on Earth and was enchanted by the lights scattered throughout the city. She sees a train just below her flight and goes after it to get to know this incredible machine up close and observe the people inside. Falling in love at first sight with the plan of humans, she goes to a place full of lights to reflect on how she should approach humans. Remembering the manual she read before traveling to Earth, a passage said that when an angel descends to Earth, they should remain in a position higher than that of humans and emit a powerful glow, introducing themselves in a grandiose manner. Alternatively, they can also hide their wings to avoid drawing attention and be more discreet. Since Talva wants to get to know humans up close, she chooses to hide her wings to avoid risks. Looking down at the bustling crowd below, she realizes how busy these people seem and feeling tired, Talva quickly looks for a place to spend the night. Wandering through the city streets at night, she has no idea where she can rest, but since she doesn't have the option to go back home at this point, the angel needs to decide quickly. So seeing a building that she thought was a gigantic mansion, Towel approaches one of the floors and lies down on the balcony, thinking it's a vacant room and that she won't bother anyone with her presence. As she settles in, she wonders if this planet really has a place for her, but she intends to reconsider this thought only after resting for a bit. At least she has the feeling she will meet someone wonderful. Then we see the angel telling Shintaro how she ended up sleeping on his balcony. Shintaro is happy that she found a place to stay, and in turn, the angel is happy to have landed right in the room of her new friend whom she already likes so much. This moment happened shortly before the end of the first episode, where they were having dinner after returning from shopping, and Tawa prepared an incredible feast for dinner. Shintaro was loving being pampered, but this time he refuses to be fed, so he enjoys the food, especially a potato he hadn't tried before and loved, while asking where Tao learned to cook like this. She explains that she also learned from the Guide to Life on Earth for Good Children, and the boy realizes that this book really must have everything. Excited about the meal, he drifts off thinking about fresh rice and succulent stew, bidding farewell to his days of frozen food and welcoming his new life alongside Tawa. At this moment, Shintaro remembers that Tawa promised to make him happy, its kind, beautiful angel, and an excellent cook. Lost in thought about the girl, Shintaro takes a break from eating, and Tawa asks if he didn't like it, but in reality, he was thinking about what he could do to repay all this kindness from the angel. Tawa thinks that being able to sleep there is enough, but since he mentioned help, she asks him to explain after dinner how to use the bathroom. So Shintaro teaches her that to take a bath, she must close the curtain to avoid wetting the basin and other things outside. Then she has to turn a knob to get hot water and another to adjust the temperature, but she must always remember to fill the tub first if she wants to use it, and also use the stopper to close the drain and keep the water inside. After the lesson on how to use the bathtub, Shintaro is happy to help, but the fact that such a girl is taking a bath there makes him very nervous, so he wakes up to life and goes to watch TV instead of sitting at the bathroom door. He turns on the television and tries to watch anything, but his imagination keeps taking him back to Tao's bath. So he tries to punish himself with several self-right hooks, but soon discovers that he won't be able to fight against this emotional turmoil he got into. Still, without giving up, he turns off the TV and decides to study for tomorrow's English test, and this time he manages to focus for a good while until he feels the need to go to the bathroom. Distracted, he opens the door and realizes he had forgotten that the bathroom was still occupied, so there was the girl undressed in front of him. He closes the door in embarrassment and apologizes for not remembering that she was in there while cursing the all-in-one Japanese bathrooms that combined bathtub with toilet. Tawa says she can close the curtain and wait for him to use the toilet, but the surprise takes away his desire to use the bathroom. Sometime later, he finally manages to use the bathtub and reflects that when you live alone, you don't have to worry if there's someone on the other side of the door, so he invaded the bathroom by instinct earlier. But Tawa also doesn't seem to worry much about these things because soon she's in there again offering to wash the boy's back, driving him crazy. Moreover, there's only one bed and the two sleep close to each other, and Shintaro can't sleep because of it. For this reason, he decides that the priority is to buy another bed tomorrow. When morning comes, the boy hadn't managed to sleep a wink, but since it was not even 6 in the morning yet, he decides to go to the bathroom and try to get some rest. However, once again, Tawa was stuck inside the bathroom, this time changing clothes, and Shintaro doesn't know where to hide his face after another blunder of this level. Because of this, the boy's sleep disappears altogether because he can only think about the nonsense of seeing her in the bathroom twice, and how it could happen again, he thinks about establishing rules to avoid this. First, he thinks about leaving the bathroom door open when no one is using it. 
Tawa comes in to brush her teeth and comes face to face with Shintaro, turning on the Churro's machine. Despite that, not everything was just secondhand embarrassment, and Shintaro's third day of life with an angel continued to be blessed with a lovely breakfast even though poor Shintaro was dead tired. Anyway, he fills his stomach with satisfaction and thanks his roommate for the treat, and when the Good Morning Mofu show starts on TV, Shintaro knows he needs to go to school. Tawa didn't know he was studying, so he explains that he's in his first year of high school. Hence, she promises to get ready now to leave together. Shintaro says she doesn't have to go to school with him because people would find it odd, but Tawa believes she can't make the young man happy if she's not always close to him. Shintaro insists it won't work, so the angel asks him to skip class. But he says seriously that his student's duty is to study, and this time the girl gives up on insisting. Soon, the homeowner leaves some money for her just in case, and asks Tawa to watch TV and relax until he returns in the evening. On the way to school, Shintaro feels a little sorry for Tawa, but there really was no way to take her along besides he didn't even sleep last night and feels like he's going to vomit from being so full. Surprisingly, his friend Shuchi slaps him on the back and the boy complains that he could have let everything out in that play, but his friend has no idea what he's talking about. At that moment, Tsumyuji arrives scolding Shuchi for being rude and blames him for Shintaro looking like he got hit by a train. Shuchi analyzes the poor boy's pale face and asks if he's possessed and Shintaro, indeed considers himself possessed by an angel. Anyway, he tells the truth that he can't sleep and Sumuni gets worried, especially since her friend lives alone, but Shuchi thinks she's showing a bit too much concern. The girl gets embarrassed and says she only cares about her friend, so Shuchi asks her to show that affection to him as he's a good boy. Shintaro laughs at his childhood friends and says they look more like a comedy couple, so Tsunyuji tells him never to repeat that nonsense again, leaving Shuchi offended by her exaggerated reaction. Meanwhile, Tawa is struggling with the blanket as she tries to hang it out to dry and still manages to keep the entire house incredibly clean, but she can't help but think about Shintaro, how happy he was to see him eating so much at breakfast, and she wishes he would come back soon. By the way, she doesn't know what he's going to eat for lunch, since he said he'll only be back in the evening, so Tawa imagines him starving on the floor like a homeless person and panics. Back at school, indeed, Shintaro will only have juice for lunch, but because he filled himself up at breakfast and can't even handle another olive, Tsuyuji is worried about her friend's diet because he can't cook and only eats bread for every meal, and that's why Shintaro almost lets slip that Tawa is making food for him, but manages to shut his mouth before saying her name and quickly adds that every day he eats well at the restaurant where he works. Still, Tsuyuji knows he doesn't have work every day, so she offers to make lunch for her friend. Shintaro notices the well-made food that the girl prepared and compliments her talent, and the girl shyly says that making an extra lunch is no trouble at all. Shuchi asks if there's some of that grub for him too, but the girl snaps that starting from the third lunchbox it starts to become a hassle. Shintaro finds the unusual conversation of the two amusing, but soon panics when he sees Toa flying out of the cafeteria window. He tries to hide the angel at all costs and tells her to go to the rooftop, that he rushes up pretending he forgot about an important appointment. Shuchi imagines he's gone to meet some girl, so Tsumivi teaches her friend a lesson for saying what he shouldn't. Seeing an angel flying around the school, a group of boys starts to think they've been playing too many video games. And when Shintaro is climbing the stairs to find Tawa, an unknown blonde notices his presence. Upon finding the angel, he remembers asking her not to come and comments on her exposed wings, so he starts to imagine news reports all over Japan confirming that angels really exist. Tawa apologizes and explains that she was just worried about what her friend would eat this afternoon, so she leaves the food on the ground and turns to leave. But Shintaro feels bad for speaking to her like that and calls his friend to eat with him, leaving the girl extremely happy. Soon they thank the heavens for the meal and get to work, and Shintaro praises the food while reflecting that Tawa probably hasn't been discovered, otherwise it would have definitely caused a massive uproar. Next, he notices that she made the potato he loved again last night, and Tawa replies that she wants to learn more about the things he likes so she can make more food. Shintaro asks her not to overdo it with these banquets, and while the two laugh together, Shintaro thinks that maybe he really was possessed by an angel, but that doesn't seem so bad after all. The next day, when Shintaro returns from school, Tawa greets him happily, while the boy apologizes for the lunchbox incident. On the other hand, the angel reminds him not to go flying around, so the two end up making amends right there. Shintaro notices that Tawa washed his clothes, even though she didn't know how to use the washing machine, but as always, the girl had learned by reading the Good Children's Guide to Life on Earth. He becomes increasingly impressed with this so-called guide, until he sees that the girl washes underwear too. Since he was a kid, only his family members wash his underwear, so he's embarrassed. But to avoid an awkward atmosphere, the homeowner tries to keep a natural pose. 
Suddenly, he sees a bear sewn onto one of the underwear and Tao explains that she covered the hole with it, so Shintaro didn't know where to hide his face. Soon because of everything the girl has been doing for him in this house, he asks to at least wash his own underwear, but Tawa thinks he didn't like the little bear, so she asks if he prefers rabbits instead. Shintaro tells her to forget about it, and just leave the underwear with him. So from that day on, washing underwear in the sink became a routine for the guy. When night falls, Sunyuja can't stand pretending anymore that she didn't want to ask about that girl, but she was afraid of seeing crazy since in her mind that girl was flying. She tries to convince herself that she was just seeing things because people can't fly. Maybe seeing Shintaro with another girl has affected Sumuji, and she doesn't even know if she'll be able to make his lunchboxes after all. It's all consuming her so much that her mother had to check if she didn't drown in the bathroom from spending so much time in there. The next day, Shintaro refuses the lunch made by Tawa because he doesn't know how to explain it at school. With this, Tawa thinks the guy now hates her, especially since last night he insisted on sleeping alone on the floor and he never lets her go to school with him. So to calm things down, he accepts the lunch and informs that he will work until 9 tonight. The angel offers to go along, but Shintaro refuses and forces a smile expressing how lucky he is to come home knowing he'll have a great dinner, and that's enough to make Tawa really happy. On the way to school, Shintaro feels bad for avoiding the girl, but he's actually happy, he just can't fulfill all her wishes. Hours later, Shuchi catches Shintaro off guard by inviting him to lunch together, and Sumugi sees this as an opportunity to ask the boy if she can make his lunch. But since he already had lunch already and packed, he invents that he saved a fainting lady on the street and got food as a thank you. When he opens the lunchbox, there's a heart with his name written on it, and he tries to devour the food to pretend nothing happened. But it's too late, Stumivi is sure another girl prepared that lunch for him. Shuchi takes advantage of the girl's distraction to grab an omelette, but she doesn't let the insolence slide. On leaving school, Shintaro is exhausted even without knowing the reason, and he can't stand making senseless excuses anymore. He thinks he could introduce Tawa and try not to reveal that she's an angel, but the problem isn't even that, he doesn't want anyone to know he's living with a girl. Suddenly, a humble old woman who is a fortune teller approaches the young man saying he entered a phase of intense problems with girls and to ward off this evil spirit, she's willing to sell these protections that cost 10,000 yen each, but just for the young man she'll do 3 for 30,000. Dodging the spiritual scam he almost fell for, he recognizes that he is indeed having this issue with girls, while at the same time refusing to see Tawa as some sort of problem. As soon as he arrives at the fancy restaurant, the employee apologizes for leaving early on Saturday, but the boss is nice and happy for the guy's improvement. By the way, he comments that Izumi, the newly hired girl, will be on duty today and asks Shintaro to be nice to the newcomer. Shintaro is curious to know who this girl is after all, and right when he opens the first door, he finds out that the girl is apparently a fan of cherries. But as he spent more time than he should analyzing this situation, Izumi greets the guy and leaves a mark on his face to never be forgotten. During a shift, another employee asks what happened to the kid's face, but he brushes it off. Right after that, Izumi hands him a cold cloth to put on his face, and upon hearing the colleague's apology, she admits she shouldn't have locked the door after all. Then she introduces herself as Izumi Noel, and Shintaro has the brilliant idea to joke that she was born on Christmas because of her name, but to his surprise, that really is the reason for her name. Finally, Izumi asks him never to touch on the subject from earlier again and leaves, and even without being able to say a word, Shintaro is happy to know he won't be reported for harassment. Still, in the hustle and bustle of the service, even though the two haven't talked anymore due to the usual rush of being a waiter, the guy is struggling not to see Izumi in those cherry-printed underwear, so he bangs his head against the wall to rid his mind of this evil, and on top of that, he imagines Tawa getting mad at all this perversion. Speaking of Tawa, he still needs to explain where these lunchboxes are coming from, but so far he hasn't thought of anything. At least the cool boss lets Shintaro and Izumi go and offers a parfait to each, which were left in the fridge. The guy seems nervous with the girl's presence, so she asks if she should leave, but Shintaro replies that he actually feels kind of useless today. Izumi says he did his job perfectly, and even if she wasn't talking about the job, he is surprised to have been praised by this tough girl. As soon as they find the parfaits, Shintaro is unlucky that they are cherry-flavored, which instantly reminds him of an earlier scene, so he tries to pretend he's okay. However, it's Izumi herself who is red as a cherry despite claiming she doesn't care about what happened. However, the situation seems to spiral out of control as the two pretend like nothing's happening and for some reason, the room's cooling seems to have reached a level that caused a snowstorm inside. So Shintaro notices the girl trembling from the cold, but as he approaches her, Izumi Noel confesses that she's a Yuki Ana. Suddenly, the cold begins to spread throughout the restaurant bothering the customers until one of them asks the waitress to turn up the air temperature. Meanwhile, 
Shintaro isn't quite surprised by his new colleague's assertion, after all, he's living with an actual angel. But out of nowhere, she tries to backtrack on her statement, saying she was being silly, and that the room's cooling is just broken. However, as she gets more nervous, a storm intensifies. To calm the nerves of the Yuki Ano, Shintaro says he doesn't mind who she is, so Azumi relaxes a bit. However, outside, the boss and the other waitress are wondering if the air conditioning malfunctioned, so Shintaro and Azumi decide to change as quickly as possible to leave the restaurant. After doing so, they run away as if their lives depended on it. And once they're far enough from fancy restaurant, Izumi proudly displays the parfaits she managed to bring even in the midst of all the confusion, and that's why they both burst into laughter. Meanwhile, the boss notices that the temperature has returned to normal as if nothing had happened. Tawa is sweating at fighting fight, getting genuinely tired and loving these crazy human games more and more. The angel got so addicted to this game that she didn't even realize the time passing and seeing it was past 9, she wonders what could have happened to Shintaro. In the meantime, Sumiuji is going crazy thinking about her classmate's lunchbox, trying to unravel this mystery as if she were Sherlock Holmes of emotional dependency. To avoid losing it completely, the girl decides to have an ice cream on the street to clear her head. Nearby, Shintaro is trying to strike up a conversation with Izumi, but the girl seems seriously troubled about something. He mentions being surprised that they both attend the same school, but nothing cheers the girl up. Soon, she questions whether Shintaro really believes what she said earlier about being a Yuki Ano. And calmly, the boy reaffirms that he believes every word she said, without stressing Izumi out further. After all, he reflects, demons surely exist in a world of angels, so it became easier to accept the truth. Next, Izumi asks her colleague to keep something she's about to say just between them, that reveals that her family has had Yuki Anas for generations, perhaps due to a genetic issue. Just like Izumi, her mother and grandmother also carried this gene, so when they got angry, sad, or embarrassed, a snowstorm would surround them. Despite her younger sister and the rest of the family controlling their emotions well, Izumi always struggled to keep calm. So she always isolated herself out of fear of causing a blizzard when losing her cool. Over time, Izumi stopped going to school and stayed alone all the time. But when she started high school, she decided to change her life and start interacting again. When she was alone at home, Izumi's routine was reading manga and watching anime. So she started working to have contact with other people. Nevertheless, and now she's losing control because someone saw her changing clothes. So maybe her place is being stuck inside the house. And in the end, she's a lost cause. Then Shintaro acknowledges his colleague's effort to always serve customers with a smile on her face because even though most people want to change, few take action to do so. For this reason, Shintaro thinks Izumi is incredible, far from being a lost cause. Upon hearing this declaration, Izumi sheds a few tears, and this makes the boy think he destabilized her again. But these are tears of relief, so to speak. Izumi had never told anyone outside the family that she was a Yuki Ano, and she's happy to have been accepted. Therefore, even without knowing exactly how to start a friendship, she asks to be friends with Shintaro, and he accepts without hesitation, even though she's a Yuki Ano. Thus, Izumi asks to be called Noel. Finally, Shintaro asks if it's true that Yuki Anas melt and disappear if exposed, but Noel laughs and says no. At that moment, a feather from one wing falls near them, and when they look up, Tawa had just arrived to see how her friend is doing, however, the angel and the Yuki Ano clash instantly. As if that weren't enough, Sumuji appears last and realizes she wasn't crazy to see a girl flying in the sky. Amidst this confusion, Tokumitsu Shintaro, who was just an ordinary 16-year-old guy working and studying, suddenly realizes that his life is far from normal as it has always been. Hey folks, we're kicking off the new anime season, and if you enjoyed this anime and want to see more of it, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We need your support to reach our goal of 70,000 subscribers. Every subscription counts and helps us grow our community. Catch you next time.